Hello everybody, so I'm back again and I decided I'd tell you a little story. It it's probably won't come across as a major um, owning my challenge, but it is a bit funny. I went off to go and collect my medication um, a couple of years back, I'd say, maybe two years back, and I stopped outside the clinic and as I got out, I saw this bachy wandering around in the street and I thought nothing of it. Waddled off to go and collect my medication and came back about an hour later, climbed into my car and got flashed by the bachy. <laughs> now I've got Chris sitting here grinning at me because he thinks it's hilarious. Well, what I really want to know, Cindy, is what is the significance <laughs> of you being flashed by this uh, homeless gentleman? I I got into my car, and as I as I closed the door, I looked to this looked out of my window because I saw this red flash in front at the, uh, the corner of red? my eye. Red, had red and uh, boxer shorts. Ah, ah, okay, okay. And he obviously wanted to impress me for some or other reason. Mm. But I looked at him, wound down the window, and I said, "Frightfully ugly shorts. Pull up your pants. Close your jacket." And my point here is purely that how do you how do you handle something like that? It is a challenge for somebody that is perhaps horrified at the situation. When it comes to somebody like that, flashing you in their underwear. Yeah. Do you take it on as a joke, or do you get upset, call the police? And have the guy arrested. Well, look, if, if I can make a comment, <laughs> I think part of mental health, if we can call it that, is a really robust sense of humor, which, as I've got to know you, I realize that you have. So that is a typical Cindy response, I think. <laughs> I and think I so think true. it's fantastic because the reality is that life gives you these smacks, as we've yeah. been talking about on this series. How do you bounce back? Now, of course, if you are emotionally very raw... At that moment, you might not have. I, I probably would have pulled his pants down and said, "Yuck!" and you know, <laughs> or uh, called the police or, or whatever. Sprayed him with, sprayed him with my with my the, hand spray or something that's in the in my car. But the but fact is I, that I probably wouldn't have called the police. No, I don't think I would ever have done that. I, I, I he's also just, got his issues. Yeah, this he's, guy. Probably, <laughs> he's probably he's probably like smoked up or something. Mm. But it certainly. But you're right. So here, the important thing is one of the ways to handle. The, when life does this to you, owning your challenges, uh, uh, managing your challenges. With humor. Humor is such an important Extremely part. Extremely important. Yeah. And I, I think this comes, I, I like to think that a lot of my humor comes across when I do post anything on social media. Mm. And it, it certainly has a huge impact in my life. I, I laugh at myself mm. just as much as I laugh at other people mm. um, when the situation warrants it. I mean, I don't laugh at somebody just for the sake of laughing at them. Yeah. But if I'm in a, a laughable situation, I make the best of it. Yeah. And I will share it with other people. And it, to me, that's just part of, of, of my, my, my entertainment, my happy life. Well, okay, I think that's great. So if, if we're looking at, uh, in the series, looking at ways of handling life when it knocks you down, humor, they, there's that old saying, laughter is the best, best medicine. medicine. for sure. It's a medicine, and it it's is. medicine that you need at that time yeah. to be able to laugh, to cause laughter, to help other people to laugh, laugh. Mm -hmm. gives you a lift, um, which sometimes you really need in life. For sure, yeah. very definitely. I, uh, I, I just can't see. The, there are so many people. I was talking to my mom the other day, and she had an incident, and she was, she was unhappy about the incident. I said to her that if you're going to allow that person to impact your life with their miserable ways, mm. they will. Yeah. I am. I'm not a loser. Mm. And if my mindset is right, I will make sure that that sort of situation does not overwhelm me. Yeah. I can't let it. Yeah. It is going to make a person ill if yeah. you allow it to do that. So I suppose 
with with humour, one does have to be a little bit cautious because we, <laughs> we live in this very diverse population. Yeah, sensitive. We've Se- got to yeah. be sensitive. We've got to be a bit sensitive. I mean, you know, no one really loves the political correct situation because mm-hmm. you find you're tripping over your own words all the time in case you might offend somebody in some way or another. Mm-hmm. But, of course, an aspect of it is that you do have to be sensitive to other people's feelings and beliefs. But humour is a great one. So... Can we ask, what, give me another story, Cindy. Can you think of another story which leads, not necessarily humor-based, but which leads us to say this is a way to handle when life knocks you down? What are some of the other ways that you got back, got up on your feet and said, okay, let's let's keep going? Um, I would say that... Um, <laughs> It might not seem funny to anybody else, but at the time, I it just popped into my mind now. It my car got taken away from me. Oh my word! <laughs> to add insult to injury, why was it taken away? Uh, I couldn't pay it. Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> it happens. Financial challenges. And, and I ended up with a, a very good friend loaning me one of his small. Minis, one of those very old minis. Mm. And I thought that was quite funny. Here I am bopping around um, KZN in, in his mini. And every time I climbed into it, I had a giggle. Because. What did you think of Mr. Bean? I thought was of it Mr. Like Bean. Mr. Bean. It was absolutely <laughs> Mr. Bean car. And what's not to laugh at? It happened. There was nothing I could do at that point to change it. So embrace the, embrace the humor. Mm. It, I was Mrs. Actually, I was called Mrs. Bean. Really? Not, I just, I just flashback there. People were calling me Mrs. Bean. My mm. very good friend Colleen, um, Tim, who passed away a couple of years back. Well, Bruce, Colleen, Bruce. Uh, she used to call me Mrs. Bean. Mm. Mm. So yeah, we used to have a good giggle about it. So the, the thing is that very often we can have one thing after another. In fact, sometimes you say, <laughs> "Why me, Lord?" You know, you're thinking, "Can another thing happen?" And another oh, thing yeah. happens. It will happen. And you know, your the, the the thing behind this podcast is owning, managing challenges, and challenges come in life thick and fast. And in fact, it seems to me, sometimes, if you look at your life, it's those moments that you grow more. You don't grow so well out of the good times. Yeah, no, no, you don't. As much as you want to feel you do. Because those things come to you so easily. It's, why would you be challenged Mm. if if it just falls in your lap? So the very thing of challenge Challenge strengthens strengthens you as a human being. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Mm. And I've had... My fair share. The more I think about it, just sitting here talking to you, I realize I've had more than my fair share of challenges, but I've just taken them on and... So I I want you, just for interest's sake, (laughs) to list some of those challenges. (laughs) So obviously there are life challenges like, Mm. you know, your car being taken away because at that time you were very low on money. Quite a few of us know that situation have been there. But in terms of, we we talked last time about HIV. Yes. In terms of, of physical health Type challenges. What 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 else, Cindy? In type of um, the physical side of the health, mm. I have also. Um, after I was diagnosed with HIV, I was diagnosed with AIDS four years after my HIV diagnosis. Okay. And the reason being that I was diagnosed with that was because my immune system had taken a big knock, and I was diagnosed with. Uh, Shingles, I had pneumonia, I had TB meningitis, and I was also diagnosed with stage 3B cancer. Whoa. Yeah, that was between 2004 and 2008. So during that, in that four-year time, all those things yeah. manifested themselves and yes. you had to deal with them. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Purely because I also didn't have the information on the medication that I should be going on at the time. Uh, nobody, not even the medical Profession professionals were clued up enough to advise me yeah. on why and when I should be taking that medication. So I didn't go on medication in time mm. to prevent um, AIDS. But once I went through that and went through all my chemotherapy and what have you, I I lived a pretty healthy life. I haven't had flu since then. I've lived well, a very here, healthy... Here we are like 10 years later. Yes. Up until 2018. Mm. I hadn't had flu, I hadn't had a cold. The odd case of bron- bronchitis, probably two, three 
um, happenings. And then in 2018, March, I had a massive heart attack. And my left side of my heart valve was completely blocked. The other side, I had 0.01 blood flow through it. I had to have a double bypass. Wow. So. Okay. So next time we talk to your <laughs> listeners, you, you're going to talk a little bit more about some specifics, specific yes. things that need to be done to, to cope with challenges. Yeah. Am I right? I think that's the best to do. So we out of here. We'll talk to, oops, we'll talk to you next time. Cheers. <laughs>